Hey everyone, this is Bwomp from Push Start Pub, and welcome to our new series called The Backlog. In this series, the reviewer will play the first few hours of a game that has been in their backlog, just to get a feeling for the game. From this, the reviewer will give their opinions on graphics, gameplay, and the story and dialogue. And to wrap up the review, the ultimate question will be answered. Will you finish this game? With the premiere of the series, we're tackling a game that has been sitting on my Xbox 360 for almost a year. Uh, I picked it up when it was free with Games with Gold back in August of 2014, actually. That's right. I'm playing Dishonored. As uh, many of you might know, Dishonored is a stealth action adventure game from Bethesda, which, according to HowLongToBeat.com, takes a little bit over 12 hours to finish, and I played the first... Uh, two hours or so of the game. Uh, the game takes place in a city that has been hit by a terrible plague. You are Carvo Atano, uh, the Lord Protector to the Empress. Or rather, should I say, the ex-Lord Protector, because the game starts out fast plot-wise. Almost instantly, the Empress is assassinated, and her daughter Emily is kidnapped. Uh, right before this, though, you meet these two creepy bald dudes, so it's like super obvious that they're the bad guys, and they're behind everything. So... Uh, they walk up to you with some other people and see that, oh, the Empress is dead. So they pin the murder on you, throw you in prison, and yeah, they look to take control of the city now that the Empress is dead. You aren't in prison long as you meet your new friends, the Loyalists. These guys know what's really going on and that you're innocent. They break you out of jail so that you can help them find Emily, the rightful heir to the throne, and rid the city of the two bald dudes whose names I really should remember, but I don't. Um, for my initial gameplay experience, it's obvious that the developers put a lot into the story, writing, and voice acting. Uh, the story and plot are simple, but written well enough to make you forget that the main story is actually quite formulaic. That's not to put the story down though. The overall theme has just been done before in other narratives. Uh, something not so formulaic in my opinion is the side story with the Outsider. The Outsider is this mysterious figure that gives you your supernatural powers. He appears to be a neutral party just wanting to see how your story progresses. Though the idea of a supernatural force guiding you through a game isn't exactly a new idea, I'm actually really interested to see more of him as the game progresses. While I say parts of the game are formulaic, the dialogue is still good, the characters are solid, and the voice acting is top notch. And the game introduces some small unique ideas that really add in some cool moments. Um, an example of this is right at the beginning of the game when they use uh, the water as an elevator to move a boat up. It's really cool. As for graphics, well, it's a last-gen Bethesda game, so it's a bit of a mixed bag. The backdrops, environments, and level design are very well done in their own right. The city itself is more or less a late 19th century industrial London, and it has a bit of cyberpunk added in. The level design in particular is impressive due to the fact that the game gives you multiple pathways for your missions. But on the negative side, the same character faces are reused pretty constantly. I've encountered multiple characters, main characters mind you, that have the same face as another major character. I would think that Bethesda might have put a little bit more into this area of the game, but to be honest it's not a huge detriment. Uh, Bethesda games on the 360 weren't exactly known for their great character designs or their graphics in general, but the graphics surrounding the characters are just more than make up for it. I'm a bit split on this game's controls. On one hand, the button layouts feel natural. The move wheel is easy to use, and the combat system is pretty straightforward. On the other hand, the controls can sometimes feel a bit loose and floaty. I've also been in a few fights where I'm trying to turn to block, and my view just randomly goes to the floor. To be fair, I don't know if that's my inexperience with the game, or if the knockback system for melee attacks adds to this. Either way, not the best thing to happen when fighting multiple enemies. The attacking part of the combat system, though, is pretty solid. It's mostly moving around that feels floaty. The sword swing itself is good and does some of the work for you with aiming your attacks. Uh, though, as mentioned earlier, the camera angles are a bit to be desired at times. I'm still trying to figure out the range of the sword, because it looks a lot smaller on screen than it actually is. The pistol is much more powerful and effective than the crossbow, which I assume is more useful for stealth. The sleep darts work well in that regard, but the pistol gets you out of more jams. I'm starting to unlock abilities with the runes now, but I have to say that I'm really finding them useful and the most enjoyable part of the game. 
Uh, as a side note, I love using Blink into a stab. And to be honest, I don't really know where else to include this, but you can chop someone's arm off, pick it up gravity gun style, and throw it across the map to distract a guard. That's kind of cool. Regarding the overall gameplay, Bethesda did a fine job. As mentioned before, the level design is really good and effective. There are often upwards of four routes that you can take to finish a mission, ranging from super stealth to aggressive kill everything that moves action. The stealth in this game is the much easier route to take, because trying to fight a group of people in this game is very difficult. The option to replay a mission is key for perfectionists who want to collect everything on a level, and the load times are remarkably good for a 360 game. Health and power refills are generally in good supply, which I for one greatly appreciate, but make sure you eat food while you can, because having no health in this game sucks. It's really satisfying to explore an area of the city, get around obstacles, assassinate your target, and get the hell out of dodge. It's not a complicated game in any aspect, really, uh, but that really works in Bethesda's favor. So we've reached the end of our review, and that means it's time to answer the ultimate question. Will you finish this game? Well, there's always been something about Bethesda games where I'm interested by them, but I'm not necessarily having as much fun as I think I am. I keep thinking to myself, there's a lot of potential here, but something is missing that distracts from the fun. This often equates to one particular part of the game being overlooked, that if fixed, would have made the game infinitely more enjoyable. Uh, for example, with Wolfenstein, it was how often you had to take cover. So in Dishonored, it's the movement and the random camera angles that happen in the middle of combat. you think that there might be fluid, more responsive controls when you're trying to be a super assassin and that maybe you wouldn't want to face away from your opponents in the middle of a sword fight. But that stuff happens, which is not the best. Having said this, I did finish Wolfenstein, and while it wasn't wow to know that I would never replay it, it was an okay experience, and I suspect Dishonored will be the same. Plus, I did really like messing around with the abilities in Dishonored, and enjoyed the voice acting and unique parts of the story. So for those factors at least, I'll probably end up finishing this game. Though I won't be rushing back to it at any time, because there's other games I want to try out first. And with that, we wrap up the first episode. Thanks for tuning in, everyone, and see you next time on The Backlog.